Internal Revenue Service IRS Tax News. Questions about economic impact payments. COVID Tax Tip 2020-44, April 22, 2020. The IRS is issuing economic impact payments. There's a link to that here. There'll be a link to this in the description. Back to the text. These payments are being issued automatically for most individuals. However, some people who didn't fi- didn't don't usually file a tax return will need to submit basic information to the IRS to receive their payment. So the basic message they're trying to get out here is that most people don't need to do anything, but there are some people that might be needing to use these tools to provide information to the IRS to give them that information to get out the economic impact payments. Note again, the payments are basically on just basically uh, who the individual is and there's an AGI limitation. So if you're under the income or the adjusted gross income and income limitation, then uh, then the question is, do they have the information to calculate it, which would basically be your, you know, yourself. It's based on, you know, who, how many people there are. So if you're a single tax preparer, payer would be yourself. And then if there's a qualifying child, so that's going to be the information. The other thing that you might consider is whether or not they have your um, your banking information so they can give you a direct deposit rather than submitting the check because submitting the check will take longer. So they have tools in those cases. So general rule. Uh, you should be okay. They should be able to issue it the check like normal if you filed even 2018 or 2019. But there might be some cases where you need to provide them with more information to either get the proper amount or get the payment faster by uh, the direct deposit. So here we go back to the text questions. The IRS is regularly updating the economic impact payment and get my payment tools frequently asked questions pages on irs.gov as more information becomes available. Here are answers to some of the most common questions. So these are going to be the economic impact payment, of course, is going to be the economic impact payment and some of the tools that are going to be used. Obviously, these are new tools. And whenever they roll something out this quick and put in these new tools that are applied to the specific need, that's not something that happens every year. There's going to be, you know, tweaks that are going to be needed to be made and questions that will be had uh, along the way. So they are updating the questions constantly and tweaking these tools as they go as they implement this information so back to the text how are payments calculated and where will they be sent if taxpayers have already filed their 2019 tax return and requested direct deposit of their refund the irs will use this information to calculate and send their payment so in other words if you filed 2019 and you have direct deposit then you're pretty good right there because they they should have all your information. They should have the information to calculate the economic impact payment, which is minimal. They don't need a lot of information, right? They need, you know, your filing status, single or or married, basically, and they need qualifying child, basically. They need minimal information, but they also need the banking information if they have that. If you want to get the payment faster through the direct deposit, otherwise it would be going through the mail. So so those that filed 2019 are good now they extended 2019 tax filing so there's probably a whole lot of people that have not yet filed uh 2019 and you should still be okay we'll probably get to that in a second but here we go back to the text those who didn't provide 2019 direct deposit information or owed tax can use the get my payment tool to provide uh, account information or payment will be mailed so in other words if if you had the 2019 and you didn't do the direct deposit They're saying you might want to get the direct deposit because the direct deposit is going to make it um, faster to get the check. And because the IRS doesn't have, you know, they're not going to be processing the paper checks as fast just in general because of the uh, social distancing. So it's going to take them longer than usual to process the paper check. So when wouldn't you have given them the direct deposit? Well, if you got a, if you had a refund and you decided to just have them mail you a check, then they don't have your direct deposit and you would have to then use this tool to give them the direct deposit if you wanted to get the payment faster through the direct deposit other than waiting for the mail or if the if you had uh if you owed money then you wouldn't have had to give them the direct deposit information because you're they're not giving you any any money so in other words if you did 2019 tax return and you owed money you wrote them a check and you didn't need to give them your banking information because they didn't they don't they don't need it right but they do still supposedly you would think have your mailing information because that's going to be on the actual tax return your address so in that case once again if you don't do anything they should still give you the payment but they're probably going to mail it that'll take longer they don't have your banking information if you want it faster you got to use the tool then to give them the banking information back to the text for those who haven't filed their 2019 return 
the IRS will use their 2018 tax return to calculate the payment. So if you didn't file 2019, quite common because they extended the deadline, then 2018 will be used. And again, they only need minimal information to calculate this thing. They need to, right, they need to know who you are and, and if you have a qualifying child and whatnot. So they'll calculate it then based on 2018. You'll be fine then unless some weird, some change that would affect the calculation, such as you had another qualifying child or something in 2019 that you didn't have in 2018, that would be information that could affect the amount of the payment possibly that they would need. So you'd want to then file the 2019 return. Otherwise, uh, if the calculation would be the same on the 2018 and 2019 circ circumstances, you should be okay and they should be processing you the payment. Now, of course, if you got a paper check in 2018 and you didn't file 2019. They don't have your direct deposit information. So you may, you know, try to give them the direct deposit, same situation. And if you owed money in 2018, then once again, you didn't give them the direct deposit information because you wrote them a check. They didn't write you a check. So in those cases, you would think that they would, what they would do is send you a paper check rather than give you to the address that you had on your 2018 tax return. Uh, or where you directed them to pay the 2018 tax return. And if you want it faster than that, then you would think that uh, you may be you may try to get them the the more current direct deposit information, either using the tool to do so or filing 2019. Back to the text, payments will also be automatic for those who receive Social Security, uh, railroad retirement, or Social Security disability. Uh, insurance, SSDI or SSI, and veterans benefits who don't normally file a tax return. So you might say, what if I didn't file 2018 and 2019 because my income is such that I don't have enough, I don't have enough taxable income because possibly a lot of my income comes from these sources and not all of it is taxable. Therefore, I don't need to file a tax return because I don't pay any taxes on it. And so then the IRS doesn't have my information. Well, these, these organizations, these, you know, partially government organizations are working with the IRS to know where those checks are being sent. So they then, then should have the information, which would be they know who the, uh, that it's an individual, so they can process an individual return. Uh, they can calculate the, the amount of the payment based on the individual return that's not over the income limitation. So the calculation should be uh, okay, and they know where the checks are going to. So they can use that same process to send out the payment. So you would think there then they would make the calculation based on, you know, one individual, typically whoever's getting the, the payments, which would be the $1,200 check. And then they would be sending that in the same fashion as you would be receiving it from these other uh, locations. Now, if that's a paper check, then you still might want to use the tool to get them to pay the payment faster if you want it faster with a direct deposit. So you might then use a tool and... If you're in a situation where it's not just you, you have a qualifying child, which could affect the amount of the calculation, then that's another area where you might use one of the tools to tell them that you have that, that you're in that situation. So back to the text. However, to add the $500 per eligible child amount to these payments, the IRS needs, needs the dependent information before the payments are issued. Otherwise, their payment at this time will be $1,200 and by law, the additional $500 per eligible child amount would be paid in association with a return filing for tax year 2020. So in other words, they're going to they're going to process the payment based on this information up up top, which means they don't, they know it's one taxpayer, that's all they know, so they're going to process the 1200. If there is a dependent, then you need to give them that information. You got to use one of these tools to give them the information about that dependent and then they may be able to increase the payment by that $500 uh, per eligible child uh, that 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 increase would be if you don't do that then then you could still get the 500 but it's not going to be happening until you file the 2020 return and you might say well i don't normally file tax returns that's the whole point because i don't have to file tax returns well if you miss the window to use the special tool which should be an easier tool that to use than filing an actual tax return then to get the 500 you'll have to actually file a tax return uh, after that point in time so it'll take longer and you'll have to do something a little bit more difficult which is to file the actual 2020 uh, the actual 2020 tax return back to the text what if the IRS doesn't have the taxpayers direct deposit information if the IRS uh, has not processed the taxpayers payment the taxpayer may be eligible to use the get my payment tool to provide their banking information to the agency so their payments can be directly deposited 
So the, the question here being, of course, well, what if what what if I think I'm going to get a payment because I fall into one of these groups where I either filed my 2018, or I filed my 2019, or I, I get payments from some of these other groups, which means they should be able to know who I am and process the payment. But they get the payments that I have had, I get by paper check. I've gotten them by paper check, or when I got a refund, I got it by a paper check, or I haven't, I didn't get a refund because I owed them money and therefore I didn't give them my direct deposit information. They don't have my direct deposit information because I gave them money. They didn't give me money. Well, then in that situation, you should still get a payment, but it would be by paper check. The paper check would take longer to send out, especially since the IRS is short on manpower here. So they, so that would take longer. So they want, they're, they're trying to get people to do the direct deposit. And the way you could get them that information, if you so choose, is with this tool, get my payment. Now, obviously, they've been issuing the payments already. So if the payment already went out, it's not going to help you because then they already mailed it. So it would be what it is. But if it hasn't been processed yet, then you could still use this tool and hopefully get the direct deposit, which should be a little bit faster. Back to the text. If no banking information is provided, IRS will mail a check to the taxpayer's address on record. The direct, uh, the, the direct debit account information used to make payments to the IRS cannot be used as the account information for the direct deposit of uh, your payment. Can taxpayers who aren't required to file a tax return receive a payment? Yes, people who don't normally file can use the non-filers interpayment info here tool to give IRS basic information to get their economic impact payments. This includes low income or no income taxpayers. So once again, what if you're somebody that doesn't file the tax return? So like I say, if you don't file the tax return and you get some other kind of uh, benefit, such as social security or something like that, then the IRS should know who you are basically because of the because they're working with the social security payment people <laughs> and so they should know who you are they should be able to process the payment and send it in a similar fashion but what if you don't get payments from something like that and you still don't have to file a tax return because you're under the income limitations let's say then uh, could you still get the payment well in that case they don't have your information and you're not required to give them the information because you're under the you don't you're not required to file so you would need to then use the non-filers interpayment info uh, here tool to give the IRS the basic information. And this is kind of like, you would think of it as kind of like fi filling out a, a basic tax return. Uh, but it, you're only giving them information. You're actually, you don't even need to give them income, but you're giving them kind of the informational purposes of, of a tax return. Like who you are, mail-in address, do you have any qualifying children and whatnot. That's going to be the basic information they need in order to calculate the actual payment and uh, send out the actual payment. Back to the text. Can taxpayers who haven't filed a tax return for 2018 or 2019 still receive a payment? Yes, anyone who is required to file a tax return and has not filed a tax return for 2018 or 2019 should file their 2019 return uh, do, uh, do so as soon as possible to receive payment. They should include direct deposit banking information on their return. So notice these questions seem similar but they're different, right? This one says, can taxpayers who haven't filed the tax return uh, for 2018 or 2019 still receive? And up here it says, can taxpayers who aren't required? So up here, they're not required to file the tax return, right? And down here, they're saying they haven't filed. So we're not assuming they haven't filed because they're not required to down here. We're assuming down here they haven't filed because they just didn't, even though they are required to. <laughs> so in that case, you can't use the same tool. You can't use the same tool of the non-filer tools up here because this tool is for people that aren't required to file, but just need to give the information. And so down here, that's that's not where we stand down here. Down here, you're going to have to file an, an actual tax return because the IRS wants to know, obviously, how much income you make and charge you taxes on it. So in this case, if you are required to file the tax return, because you are over, you know, the, you know, you got to file a tax return and you haven't done so for 2018 or 2019, you could still get the, the payment, but you're going to need to file a tax return. And they're suggesting uh, file a tax return for 2018 or 2019 should, should file their 2019 re-tax return. So they want you to file the 2019 tax return. So they're saying if you, <laughs> if they don't have 2018 or 2019, they want your 2019 return. So uh, in order to do that, you'd probably want to file both 2018 or 2019. So in that situation, you might, if you don't have all the information at this point in time, you might want to file a return as best you can for 2019 and then possibly uh, plan on amending it if there's some kind of uh, question or, or problem with it 
so that you can get the economic payment sooner and then amend the tax return uh, to, 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 you know, do your best with it, with, with what you have now. If you have like a Schedule C business and you just don't have the bookkeeping for it, you know, do your best <laughs> for it and, you know, file a tax return, get the, get your, your payment and then amend it when you, when you are able to pull things together and, uh, and figure things out. That would be one way you might want to think about if that's a situation for you. Back to the text. I receive an additional 500 in 2020 from a qualifying child. However, he just turned 17. We'll have to pay back the 500 next year when I file my 2020 tax return. So now we got some, a qualifying child that's on the border, right? I received an additional 500 in 2020 for my qualifying child. However, he just turned 17. So now he's over the qualifying child at 17. Will I have to pay back the 500 next year? And so notice what they did is they based the qualifying child, you would think it looks like, on 2019 information possibly and gave out the extra 500. And now the question is, well, you know, now they're on the border. Am I, am I going to have to give it back after I filed 2020? And the answer here, they're saying, no, there's no provision in the law requiring payment of an economic impact payment. When you file next year, you can claim additional credits on your 2020 tax return if you are able, if you are able to, uh, if you are able to eligible for them. For example, if your child is born in 2020, but you won't be required to repay any payment when filing your 2020 tax return, even if your qualifying child turns 17 in 2020 or your adjusted gross income increases in 2020 above uh, the threshold listed above. So that's going to be another kind of similar concern where they're giving you basically the money now and you say, well, what if my income is, a, is above the threshold? Do I have to pay the money back? It looks like they're saying here at this time, uh, no, that shouldn't be the case. So 